Good afternoon. Thank you. On behalf of the students and faculty, it's my honor to welcome you to this special announcement. Today will be remembered as a landmark occasion in the 127-year history of the College of Engineering. I'm excited to be serving as dean at such a momentous time. Let me begin by recognizing University of Utah President Taylor Randall, Heather Collert, Vice President of the Collert Foundation, Mary Hall, Director of the School of Computing, President Emeritus David Pershing, and members of our advisory boards, special friends of the university, and represents, representatives of the media. And especially, I welcome our faculty, staff, and students. Without further delay, I will announce the program. We will first invite President Taylor Randall to come to the podium. Then we'll be pleased to hear from Heather Collard. Following them, I'll make a few remarks. Then we'll hear from Mary Hall and then Emily Best, a computer science student. President Randall. My goodness, thank you, Dean Brown. What a remarkable day we have today. Thanks to the faculty, staff, and students that are all here with us and all of our guests. As I understand, this is also being live streamed. So I too want to welcome Heather, but I understand that her family and many of the Collart Foundation members are online. So hello, this is a wave and shout out to you. We're so glad that you're here today. As uh, the Dean mentioned, we're here to name the school's computing as part of a very generous gift from the Collart Foundation. But before making the official announcement and getting you all geared up for a loud round of applause and a cheer, I want to talk a little bit about computer science here at the University of Utah, what it has meant, quite frankly, to the entire world, uh, and what the impact of Heather's efforts and this gift will actually have on uh, the School of Computing here in the College of Engineering. So as you might know, uh, the College of Engineering, the School of Computing have a notable history. Uh, they have brought to us, of course, Buzz Lightyear and Woody via the, uh, the incredible ing ingenuity of Pixar, founded by Ed Catmull, and we stand today in the Catmull Gallery, is my understanding. Of course, we're in the John Warnock uh, Engineering Building, the uh, founder of Adobe. All of these incredible individuals associated at one time with this college and with the School of Computing. Uh, I would encourage all of you to grab a light read, a book called Pixel, if you, uh, if you actually want to understand a lot more about the revolutionary things that came out of this uh, college and school uh, on almost every page. It mentions individuals that were scientists here or students in our labs. They have simply put, uh, been visionaries. Today, this catalytic gift will also launch a massive effort to construct a new home, a 209,000 uh, square foot home, that, which is now six stories. Rich, we keep adding stories. Uh, I hope that's right. Um, but anyway, at some point, these engineers are gonna have to tag a logarithm of the number of stories on this building uh, so that we can actually see it on paper. Um, but anyway, we're excited uh, to, be able to, to, to be able to name this school today uh, before we actually end up um, constructing this building. Um, just a few, I would say, remarkable facts about uh, this college and school. 50% of the engineering and computer science talent of this state comes from this college and this school. That attributes to more than 19 billion, that's with a B, I was gonna say million, 19 billion dollars in the state's economy. Let's give it up for that small fact. So today, I am happy to announce with the gift, generous gift of $15 million 
from the Collert Foundation, the School of Computing will now be known as the Collert School of Computing, thanks to the generosity of the Collart Foundation. Heather uh, and the foundation have been very active here on campus, uh, from athletics to medicine to business to computing and particularly education in technology, focused on females especially, I know that's your passion. The Collard Initiative on Technology has been here for a number of years. Those of you that wander over to our freshman dorms will see the Collard Village and individuals getting ingrained in uh, the beginnings of what you can do with technology as a career. Um, we are so honored that their family would now launch this school into the next decade of excellence. Um, we will grow the most quality and diversified workforce in technology. We will be the fuel for many, many years of growth here in this state. And now if I could channel a little bit of Pixar and invite uh, Heather to the stand. Heather, I'm frozen here, waiting for you, let it go. Let it go, it's your turn. <laughs> Thank you so much, that was so kind. I'm, uh, I wanted to start by thanking the University of Utah and uh, the Collert School of Computing, I guess now, uh, for giving me the opportunity to share some brief remarks today. I always feel so welcome and loved on this campus. Um, thank you, President Randall and Dean Brown and Dr. Hall for being such gracious hosts and putting this all on. Um, I'm really proud to be representing my family today. Uh, my kids are all right here. If you wanna know them, come up and talk to them. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yay, kids. <laughs> Um, they're teenagers, so I had to embarrass them. Um, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my grandfather, William Collert, who started our family foundation in 1991. And after a long career as a business owner, technology leader, and innovator in the HVAC industry, today our foundation is proud to carry on his legacy by supporting healthcare, youth programs, education, veterans, and human services. Simply stated, the goal of the foundation is to improve lives and happiness. <laughs> we do this by supporting organizations and leaders who are making a positive impact in their communities. And I can definitely say the University of Utah is one of our favorites. <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> One of my passions over the past several years have been helping improve the digital literacy of the University of Utah students, regardless of major. The Collart Foundation has done this through the Collar Initiative on Technology, which provides the opportunity for all students, regardless of major, to earn a digital literacy certificate. I believe digital literacy is an important key to strengthening our community and building the economic future of Utah. However, today's donation to the School of Computing is deeply personal to me. It is the largest gift that we have given yet to the university and also the largest gift that our foundation has ever made in its history. <laughs> and one that I think will have a major impact. The university has produced legendary graduates from its School of Computing. My hope is that this donation will be the driving force that puts qualified and diverse computer scientists and engineers into Utah's community. The University of Utah and its incredible School of Computing have been a hidden gem for far too long. The Collar Foundation is thrilled to help support this school to make it even stronger. Um, just a big thank you to the students and faculty gathered here today. Um, I know we're in the middle of a semester and that you're very busy, 
So thank you again for taking the time to come out and, uh, and be part of this historic announcement. It means a great deal to me that you took your time to celebrate with us. On behalf of my family and the board of directors at the Colert Foundation, we are honored to make this donation. Um, I look forward to seeing what the graduates of this wonderful school create in the year ahead. As a famous research engineer once said, scientists study the world as it is. Engineers create the world that has never been. Thank you. Thank you, President Randall, and thank you, Heather. By endowing the School of Computing, the Collar Foundation is securing the future of one of the University of Utah's most storied departments. Heather, as the champion of this naming, you are taking your place among distinguished graduates, faculty, and benefactors who have kept the University of Utah at the forefront of computing for more than 50 years. It's so nice to have your children, Hannah, Vera, and Daniel with us today. And perhaps someday you'll be students here in the Collar School of Computing. In computing circles around the globe, the University of Utah is recognized as the birthplace of computer graphics. The fledgling program that emerged in the late 1960s under the direction of professors David Evans and Ivan Sutherland attracted one of the greatest concentrations of talent in the world, producing graduates who pioneered the information age. To name just a few, Alan Kay was responsible for the graphical human-computer interface. Jim Clark founded Netscape, one of the original web browsers. Ed Catmull, as President Randall mentioned, uh, pioneered feature film computer animation. John Warnock, as the co-founder of Adobe, launched the greatest evolution in printing since Gutenberg. Other notable graduates like Alan Ashton, the founder of WordPerfect, and Ray Norda at Novell shaped the beginnings of Utah's own silicon slopes. With such a past, the school of computing today is more essential than ever, as computing has evolved into the underpinning technology for the 21st century way of life. In Utah, the importance of computing as a factor in the economic landscape is profound. As President Randall mentioned in a recent report by the Chem C. Gardner Policy Institute, Utah's engineering and computer science workforce is responsible for both the $19 billion in salary that he mentioned and $25 billion in gross domestic product which represents 12.5% of the state's economy now. Our graduates are in high demand, and they command the highest salaries among the state institution's graduates. Computer science is now the largest and fastest growing undergraduate major at the University of Utah. According to our analytics group, there are now 1,800 computer science and 300 computer engineering majors. The graduates of these programs are supporting fighter jets using AI to detect and diagnose disease, defending critical information against cyber attacks, reinventing banking, and improving wireless communications to name just a few areas of their impact. Predicted growth in Utah's engineering and computer science employment exceeds that of all other occupations for the next decade. 
Our continued dominance as one of the top states for economic outlook depends entirely on our ability to graduate even more engineers and computer scientists. I want to conclude by thanking Heather and the Calder Foundation once again for strengthening our ability to meet and exceed the demands of the future as Utah's flagship computer science program. When the history of the department is recounted in years ahead, the name Heather Collard will be included among the luminaries who led the program to greatness. I'd like to ask Mary Hall to join me, and I'd like to have Heather come up here. We have just a small token of our appreciation, which I hope... Someone's great. Uh, <laughs> Yes, thank you. <laughs> Christy, some flowers in University of Utah colors. And we also have some collard branded swag and some t-shirts that we know your children like because they say nerd on the front. <laughs> thank you, Heather. We all appreciate you so very much. I'm happy to turn the time over to Mary now. So I'm going to address my remarks to the students, faculty, and staff of the School of Computing, because you're the ones that are going to benefit from this gift. And I want to thank you all for showing up. This is an amazing turnout. Um, it's great because uh, uh, now you get to join in the celebration. Uh, the computing legacy of the School of Computing that Dean Brown talked about is very impressive. But I believe that when the 100-year history of the School of Computing is written, that this period, 2022, will be just as consequential. And I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that have happened just in this year or in the year before. Um, you heard about the growth in undergraduates, but we have 36% more graduate students this year than we had last year. Uh, we have 12 new faculty that joined in 2022, and we have eight more that are committed to join in 2023. And because we had all these students and faculty, we've um, nearly doubled our, or we're in the process of doubling our uh, academic advisors and our accounting staff as well to, to be able to manage all of this. So the Collard Foundation is wisely investing in a group of people, I can assure you, that are very dedicated and um, very uh, invested and very talented in moving the school forward. So all of us in the School of Computing share the Collard Foundation's goal of making computing welcoming and inclusive. It's something we are constantly working on. In 2020, we established the Utah Center for Inclusive Computing. Um, and the goal was to attract students with a variety of interests and uh, different levels of preparation, bring them into the computing field. So some of the things we've done, we've created multiple pathways into the major. And we've just introduced a new Bachelor of Science in Software Development um, that started this fall. So computing. Uh, is an ex exciting, well-compensated, always changing field that should be accessible to everyone. And that's why we're doing this. The work is creative, it's flexible, and you can apply your skills to whatever else you're passionate about. But the most imp important reason to broaden participation in computing is so that the people who are developing technology are representative of the people who are using it. And everybody uses technology. So the developers should also represent uh, everyone. It's well established that a diverse team produces better results because they synthesize different viewpoints and, uh, and different life experiences. So the color gift will enable us to make computing degrees uh, accessible to more students 
and it'll allow us to support the students, faculty, and staff. So for the undergraduates, we will expand on student success programs for incoming transfer and at-risk students. And as an example, uh, the color gift will give us permanent funding for uh, something we started this summer, a bridge program for entering students, um, selected entering students to help them prepare for college and bring them, uh, make them more competent as they start. Uh, for graduate students, it will amplify professional development training and provide travel grants. The Color Guild will help us to continue to grow and develop our faculty, supporting their research that makes positive contributions to the world and to the field. It will provide resources to the staff to support their work. And then finally, the GIP will uh, enable us to establish an industry, academia, government ecosystem in Utah with the Collard School of Computing at, at its hub. So I'm gonna close by talking about one more famous alum from our program, Telly Whitney. She received a BS in computer science at Utah in 1978. And she went on to get a PhD at Caltech and uh, started her career designing computer chips and their software. She was also a senior lead at several startups. But then in 1994, she took a turn in her career. She decided to focus on making the field more welcoming, particularly for women. So she created, with her, along with her good friend Anita Borg, the Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing, which is an annual conference that now has well over 20,000 attendees every year. And it's had a huge impact on the field. In, uh, it, it has a lot of industry engagement and academic engagement. And the students, a bunch of our students, probably some here, uh, attend every year. She also uh, co-founded NCWIT, the National Center for Women in Information Technology, in 2004. And that's a, a, a program that uh, has a lot of impact on Utah. There's, a, there's an aspiration award that, that probably some people in this room have received. And they've helped us a lot with our program. So uh, Telly once said, diversity drives innovation. When we limit who can contribute, we in turn limit what problems we can solve. So I'm excited by the opportunity the Color Gift will provide to broaden participation in the computing field in Utah and open the door to solving new problems. And let me, yeah. Our next speaker is uh, a computer science undergraduate, Emily Best. Thanks, Mary. Dr. Hall. As I've been sitting here thinking about the numbers and letting them sink in, I'm realizing this gift is going to have a really big impact on a lot of people. Um, it's through donors like your family that I'm able to be here. And I know it's made a, a world of difference in my life now and in the future. So Heather, family, thank you very much. Well, hi, as was introduced, my name is Emily, Emily Best. I am a junior studying computer science here at the U. And a little bit more about me, I'm from Seattle, Washington. And as a fun random fact, besides Java and C++, I also speak Spanish. But it's a really great opportunity to be here and I'm excited to share a few thoughts with you today. Specifically, I've focused my speech on three principles that I've been learning in my experiences here as an undergrad studying computer science at the U. So those three principles are, number one, it's okay to be new. Number two, our work has meaningful potential. And number three, no one gets left behind. So let's begin. Number one, it's okay to be new. When I arrived at the U in 2017, I knew I wanted to study engineering, but I wasn't sure which type. And so there's a class called Survey of Engineering that talks about the different disciplines offered here at the U. So I enrolled in that class. And through the different 
trial and errors, I found that computer science fit a lot of what I was looking for. It has challenging problem solving, and there are skills that can be applied to lots of different areas, like business, medicine, education. Um, so that was exciting. I found something I liked, but I was still really nervous about computer science because I knew it was a difficult major. And 30 minutes of an unfinished HTML CSS tutorial was the extent of my programming experience. So my biggest fear was that I would be the only student in the room who had never programmed before. And I was wrong. But those were some of my thoughts coming into the program. I was nervous. I enrolled in CS 1030, Foundations of Computer Science, just to test the waters, and sure enough, I loved it. So I decided to take the jump and study computer science. And taking that jump has taught me a lot of different things. So speaking to the students right now, something I've learned is that professors, TAs, future employers, they don't expect any of us to know every aspect of computer science. Those expectations are unachievable and unrealistic for anybody. In fact, Stack Overflow, which is used all over the industry, not just by students, is an example of this. It's a website where we can go if we you can kind of like, how do I explain this? It's a forum where you can ask questions and get, um, you can read people's responses of different problem solving things they've found. And that's a resource that is used by everyone for if you forget something simple. So for all the students, know that it's okay to be new. Number two, our work has meaningful potential. During the summer of 2019, I had the opportunity to intern with Facebook. And at this internship, I was introduced to Facebook's Light apps. So before the internship, most of my time was spent on campus or at my house where I have a stable connection. I'd never considered the need for Light apps, but what these Light apps are is it's a smaller version of the original app that's made specifically for areas that have poor connection. So fast forward a few months later, I was serving as a missionary in the Dominican Republic, and I learned that these apps are the main messaging platforms for people not only in the DR but all around the world. And furthermore, the light versions of the apps are more popular because they have better connection in the spotty country towns that I was serving in. So this experience showed me that the decisions and daily work of software developers in Menlo Park, California, affects the daily communication between loved ones in the Esperanza Dominican Republic. Our work has a difference. Software is everywhere and it's used by billions of people 24 seven. We write programs, we improve computer systems, and we analyze data for people. People like the busy doctor with a dinosaur laptop, or the blind grandfather who calls his grandkids on their birthdays, or the small business owner in a developing country who keeps her records on her smartphone. Our work can have a really big impact in the lives of people around the world. Finally, number three, no one gets left behind. This is an experience I imagine many students can relate to, but last semester I was in 3810 and there was an assignment, computer science 3810, computer organization. I was, there was an assignment that I had finished days before it was due and I was feeling confident, but just a few hours before the deadline I double checked my submission just to make sure, and sure enough it was not outputting the right values. I don't know what happened. Luckily, in my state of frantic, I was studying with my friend Gabby, who had already finished the assignment and her other homework, so she stayed up with me to look at my code and see what I was doing wrong and help me fix it. And I'm really grateful for her help. Experiences like this, I have them weekly, if not daily, where peers, professors, TAs go the extra mile to help me or someone else with a concept that they're struggling to understand or to finish a difficult assignment. Just to illustrate this, I've seen TAs stay hours after their shifts, and I've seen professors fill in for those TAs, all to help students. And I'm proud and grateful to be part of a group that performs this service. My hope for us students is that as we graduate and enter the workforce or continue with our studies, that we hold on to this mentality that no one gets left behind, because the world could use a lot more of it. So to conclude, the School of Computing is filled with excellent people, and I've loved being part of it. 
um, the skills and concepts that we're learning are valuable and they can make a positive difference in the world, especially as we step up and look for the opportunities to apply them. I'd just like to say thank you to the CalArt Foundation for supporting me and other students as well. And I'm excited to see the growth and opportunities that come to more students. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Professor Hall. Thank you, Heather and the Collar Foundation. Uh, thanks to all of you for being here to be part of this celebration of the naming of the Collar School of Computing. It's a great day at the University of Utah. I'd like to now invite you to uh, enjoy visiting, having some light refreshments. Uh, for the benefit of the students who are here, and thank you all for being here, we have some heavier refreshments, namely pizza, in the boardroom. So uh, en enjoy uh, visiting and mingling and, and the rest of the celebration. Thank you all.